Hey friend, my name is Danielle. Thank you for moving again with me. Today's session is a yoga flow that combines the upper part of your body with the lower half, really noticing how your spine connects your shoulders and your hips towards each other. This is a recovery day, a reset day, so make the transitions as challenging as you want, but also know you are totally okay to slow it down and take it a little bit more gently if you like. We're gonna start lying all the way on the ground. So bring yourself down so that your hips are just heavy on the mat and hug your knees in towards your body. You can take a little rock from side to side if you like with the knees, just kind of feeling how your hips can stay glued to your mat and your shoulders start to pull down away from your ears. Just so you've got this really broad surface against your back to rest on the ground. Close your eyes and we're gonna take three breaths before we start moving. These breaths are to connect you down into your body, to give you a sense of presence, of being really feeling underneath the surface of your skin. So fill up through the lungs for me. And as you exhale, feel your ribs close down, maybe hug your knees in a little more. Do it twice more. Inhale, really fill up. And as you exhale, feel like you're letting go of the air slower and slower until there's no breath left. Just one more time, breathe in. Exhale, really soft, really slow. Now stretch your left leg out. Keep your right knee really pulled in towards your body. Take a little rock from edge to edge to kind of feel this movement through your hip. When you're ready, you're gonna twist the knee all the way over. Let your knee just drop to the floor and make sure you're resting on the left shoulder. Then take your right arm up and over and feel this big pull of your chest. You might notice your knee lifts, that's absolutely fine. And then close everything down. We're just gently starting to spiral open. So breathe in to reach up and breathe out as you land. Then reverse, breathe in to reach up, breathe out to land. A couple more. And in yoga, you really connect your breath towards the movement that you do so that you just have more attention to what's going on in your inner environment rather than everything that's going on outside of you. Your breath gives you kind of an anchor into feeling more. This is your last one. We're gonna open and hold for just two breaths. So go up and over. As you find that hold, drag your shoulders away from your ears. Feel like your right hip is pulling down and your right shoulder is gently pulling away from your ear. If your arm is quite high off the floor, take a little higher and think of sending the hip away from your shoulder. So there is this equal and opposite reaction of a push and a pull. Just take one more big breath in here, really expand. And then as you exhale, we'll do the other side. So just pull both knees back into your chest. Give yourself a little rock. And you're gonna squeeze the left knee into your body, stretch the right leg out. Do the same little shift of your hip from side to side. You can drag the knee across. You might find a little point that has a tiny bit of tension. Maybe hold it there for a moment and notice what's going on. You want to be working into feelings of stretch, but never pain. Then drag the knee all the way across your body. You're lying on your side and take the left arm out to the edge. If the shoulder is really rolled up, see if you can just pull it down your back, maybe by taking the arm higher as well. And we'll do these little reaches across. So let the arm reach all the way across, reach up to the sky and use your exhale to pull over. And then reverse up and around. Inhale to reach up, exhale to let go. Inhale to reach up, exhale. Couple more, inhale and around. So we're not just creating an arc, we're really thinking to reach up and it's gonna help our spine react a little better. Good, all the way up and over. This is our last one, reaching up. Use your exhale to go over, hold. Again, if your arm is quite high off the floor, take it a little higher than your shoulder and maybe bend the elbow to support it or keep the arm in line with your shoulder, but pull the shoulder blade down away from your ear. The right hip is sinking into the floor. The left hip is pulling away from your shoulder. So it's like the spiral really runs down all the edges of your back. And take one more big breath in, one more big breath out. And then dragging yourself all the way back to center. We're gonna do some roll-ups down and up. So just really connect to your back. Bring your hands to prayer. Reach your arms forward here. You can flex or point the toes, it's up to you. But think of yourself having layers all the way down your back. 
And when you next exhale, curl your head and shoulders off just to kind of the upper part of your shoulder blades. Take a moment to hold and then roll yourself down. Take a little breath. Try again to scoop a little higher and go all the way down. We're gonna do three more. Each time's gonna get a little bit higher. So draw yourself up and I'm really scooping in and then replacing every single bone on its own. Two more times like this. Layer yourself up, almost to seated. From your hips, you tuck under, which helps you roll back down. And your last one, your exhale is going to help you sit all the way up. Once you're sitting up, put your hands on the floor, just slide your feet in and come into a little squat for me. Have a little bit of freedom in this squat. Allow your hips to rock from side to side. Maybe you find that your heels don't want to drop just yet, so don't force them. But let your knees do their thing, drop down, rock in and out just to start creating this feeling of being grounded and supported through your legs. When you find yourself in the center, if your heels don't touch, that's absolutely fine, but your balance will be compromised. So make sure your hands stay on the floor. If your heels are happily on the floor, you can take your hands into prayer. We're gonna do little forward folds. So hands down, take a breath in. As you exhale, push your heels out so your toes go parallel to your heels and just drop your head. Notice my knees are bent right now, so it's my chest touching my thighs. Then turn your heels back in, come towards your squats. If you wanna take it deeper, your elbows stay on the insides of your knees. You inhale, think of a big arch of your back, like a back bend. And as you exhale, shoot your arms through, your heels go out and you drop your head a lot. We're gonna do four more of these with your hands on the floor or your elbows on the insides of your knees. But it's this feeling of really scooping in. You never have to totally straighten your legs, but you can. Each time we're trying to feel like we're feeding our body in through the gate of our legs, but feeling really firm and supported through your feet at the same time. You just have two more like this. So reach yourself all the way through, maybe tuck your head. This is your last one. Inhale, big lift. As you exhale, feet go parallel. Hold it there with your fingers on the ground. Your shoulders are close to your knees. If you want to go further, reach your arms through. Your legs are almost straight or hold onto your ankles and straighten your legs a little more. Tuck your head in, your neck really affects how much your hips can stretch. So let your neck be really relaxed and just hold for one more breath in and one more breath out. Then release the hands, take them behind your head and roll up really slowly. You can bend your knees if you like to carry you all the way up. We're gonna take a variation to Surya, keeping our hands behind our back. So interlace the hands and use a breath in to scoop your elbows towards the sky. Really squeeze your glutes forward as well. As you exhale, roll all the way down, your chin goes to your chest, and you peel your spine to the floor. From here, land your hands on your shins. Imagine you have long socks on, and you're gonna pull them up your legs as you look forward. So it's almost like a deadlift shape. Wrap your hands to your calves. Think of sliding those long socks down to your heels to drop your head. Feel the stretch through the back of your legs. And then let's take it to a plank, just one foot and then the other. We're doing a variation of a chaturanga today. You're gonna land your knees, send your chest towards your thumbs, create a little ski slope with your back. And then when you're ready to unroll, push your hips into the floor and ripple yourself through. Your hips drop down, your chest looks up, pull your shoulder blades back. And then on your next exhale, let yourself come into downward dog. Instead of holding downward dog still, we're gonna make it a little bit more fluid. So come up high onto your toes, let your chest ripple forward, really find that connection, and then bend your knees, push all the way back. If you wanna take it deeper, and it's no, you don't have to, it's just if you want to, allow your hips to sink lower, so you come to upward dog, but with your toes tucked, then bend your knees and fold yourself back. You're gonna do this just twice more, coming forward towards your plank or towards your upward dog and dragging yourself back. So creating even more space in your spine, even more control as you draw forward. Maybe drop your hips, shoulders together, and then pull all the way back. Take just one breath in downward dog. You can keep your knees bent and still get a really good stretch in your hamstrings if you tip your hips up. Try to drop your head in and draw your ribs together. If you want the legs to be straight, that's absolutely fine, but just check that it's not meant you've compensated through your upper back. For one more breath, and then come to the front. Your feet are about shoulder distance apart. We'll do the whole thing again. So interlace your hands behind your head. 
start to roll up through your spine go really slow and as you inhale look up as you exhale start to feed your way down take your time when you find your hands on the floor bend your knees put your hands on your shins and slide up you can keep your knees bent or straight as you exhale slide your hands down your calves pull yourselves in and then again take it towards your plank we'll descend in the same way this little spinal roll so land your knees keep your hips hinging back as you send your chest down and then push through the ground to ripple through as your hips drop lift your chest up maybe your knees come off the ground and your next exhale takes you back take a second to walk through your feet maybe shake your head out we'll do the same little ripple four more times if you want you can bring your feet together now it'll just make your spine move a little bit stronger as you roll forward you find plank if you want you can drop your hips and then bend your knees to push back you might feel a bit of stretch in your ankles as well if you do be really aware of that that's amazing it's a really good thing to notice that you are connected into sensation not just in the big muscles of your body but in the little connective parts in your wrists in your ankles and your toes you've got two more like this all the way back and this is your last one take it forward back to your downward dog let your hips go high separate your feet more so you can find a solid downward dog if you find your heels are quite high on the floor I encourage you to take your feet even wider almost as wide as the edges of your mat maybe bend your knees and send your chest towards your thighs the heels might start to drop a little more if they feel flat on the ground check that your ribs are still tied together so there is support line across the front just for one more breath in and one more breath out let's land down on our knees take a little check that your spine is happy to move both ways shoulders are going together as your chest goes up and then shoulders go apart as you pull in this kind of really foundational stretch of your back your cat and your cow every single time it can teach you something new about how your breath is working with your spine today because it might be different than yesterday you've got two more like this really draw in and release out think of pulling your chest through your arms one more time let everything push away and everything draw in in between these two extremes there is a neutral where your ribs are held tight and your spine is really long from here i just want you to kick your right leg out hold it for a moment keep your other toes tucked under and release your left arm out take your arm a little higher so almost higher than your ear and take your back foot a little higher see if you can find your balance then you're just going to draw the knee into your chest actually hold on to the knee and pull it up towards you do it twice more like this inhale to reach away maybe look up take the arm even higher than your ear and exhale bring everything in this is the same shape of your spine that we just did in cat and cow but now with one arm and one leg extended you're going to fold everything in for our flow step your right foot outside your hand so you're nice and low actively turn out your toes to face the corner of the room and you're pressing into the knife edge of your foot you're pressing your hands into the floor to lift your back knee up and I'm just going to turn away from you slightly so I press onto the knife edge of my back foot as well if you feel you the stretch is nice in your hip and you want to go further look over your right shoulder so you sink a little deeper and then just lift yourself back up spiral your toes to the front twice more like that you're looking over your right shoulder to find this little twist in yoga they call this a shiva twist and then take yourself forward one more time just really feel that stretch line through the outside of your hip and take it forward your right elbow is going to go towards your knee back leg goes flat and you're going to open the arm out this is side angle check that this shoulder really moves down away from your ear so you've got loads of space as you extend to triangle I want you to pull up with your elbow so you really find this extension then take it back down you can even stretch the arm over your head as you pull up feel like your shoulders move down so you can find more space and release back one more time let everything draw back find that support line and release you're going to stand up turn your toes to parallel hands on your hips for a, a second 
and shift your hips to the left. So you slide your right hand down to support. We're taking a big side stretch all the way up and over the body. This is a really easy place to want to back bend, but focus on drawing the ribs in so the stretch is through your side. I want you to close your eyes so you feel the stretch more. And you're gonna take one big breath through the left side of your body. One big exhale. Change side, same thing, hands onto your hips. Shift the hips to your right. Let the left hand slide down your leg. Your right arm goes up and over. Again, check that you're feeling the stretch down the edge of your body rather than a back bend. Hmm. And just listen to the siren, enjoy it. Welcome to London. So, same on the other side, hands on your hips. Shift your hips towards the right, slide your left hand down your back. Take your right arm all the way up and over, like side one, I want you to close your eyes and visualize the breath kind of expanding through the side. Take a really nice breath in for me. As you breathe out, you can blink open your eyes. You're gonna to turn to face the other side, so just look to the left. Find yourself in towards a plank. Squeeze the ankles together. Like we did, we're landing our knees. Land your chest and your chin, so you make a little ski slope of your back. And then push yourself all the way through. See if you can ripple. Maybe your hips start to sink. Maybe your knees want to come off. Just do with what feels good for your low back. And as you find downward dog, push the hips away. Take a second to just walk through the legs. Maybe shake out the head from side to side. Land your knees on the floor. Exactly the same thing the other way. So take your left leg up, squeeze it. Check that your, your belly button is kind of scooping in towards your spine as well. Right arm goes out. Take it a little higher than your ear so you feel everything expand. Then hand to knee, pull yourself in. Imagine you're rounding like the big cat stretch you did before. Twice more, everything extends out and everything draws in. Last one, everything goes out and everything goes in. Okay, from here, step your left foot outside your hand. Turn your toes out so they face the corner of your mat and then come onto the knife edge of your back foot as well. Have a little turn over your left shoulder just to find a bit of stretch and then reset, look forward. If you don't wanna go onto the knife edge of your feet, you can also just turn your body and you might feel the stretch, but coming onto the edges of your feet will help you find the stretch a little deeper. And then come forward. We're doing one more. So you use your breath out to twist and use your breath in to look forward. We're coming to side angle, so put your back heel flat. Your left elbow is on your knee, palm facing up with the shoulder down. Just peel yourself open. I like to imagine I'm using my elbow to push my knee back a little more. As we straighten, scoop up with the thigh so you feel your quad engage underneath your arm. And then come all the way down, really find that support. Twice more, think of scooping up. You can reach over your head if you want. And then coming back down. Last time, scoop. And back down. From here, we're gonna stand, turn your toes to parallel, so they all face the long edge of your mat. The same as before, shift your hips to the left, feel a big side stretch all the way up and over your body. But you can close your eyes if that feels good. Maybe you let your arms slide a little further, just for one breath in, and one breath out. Other side, lift, shift your hips the other way, up and over, feel that big side stretch, strong quads, you can close your eyes. It might change your balance as well, which can be interesting. But after you finish this exhale, coming up, turn to face the front of your mat. We're gonna find ourselves down to plank. Land your knees first, land your chest second for that ski slope in your back. And then try to draw your belly button in as you push the floor away. Coming into your cobra with your knees down or your upward dog with your knees off, really dragging the shoulder blades back. Imagine there is a pencil between your shoulder blades. Try to hug it a little more. From here, you're finding downward dog. Lift your hips. Move through the ankles a little. Give your head a little shake so there is space to move. There is no tension that you need to hold in your neck. Trust that your body is strong enough to not clench your jaw, to not jack up your neck. It's all good. We're gonna take a little rocks forward and then we're gonna try crow, just for fun. 
I want you to step your feet halfway up your mat. You are balancing on your toes right now, so your heels are lifted. And you're gonna take your hands flat. Think about almost gripping the mat like a little spider grip, so it's like you're trying to squeeze in with your hand. That's going to make your balance stronger, and it's gonna support your forearms and your wrists. Well, we're taking little slides down, so send your knees behind your wrists. Really scoop up from your belly, and just see if you can slide the knees up to higher than your elbows. And then land. Do a couple more like that. You'll feel like you, can, you can't go any higher, but really scoop in and you'll find that extra inch. Three more times, hands down, slide your knees up, really get them as high as you can, and then slide down. Two more times like this, slide up, find that support. Maybe you wanna lift one foot, see what it feels like, and land everything down. That is the support line you need from your shoulders in your center. So last time, slide up, take the other foot off, and release for crow. If you're sitting on your toes and you put your hands flat on your knees, you will find a flat part at the front of your knee, which you're gonna rest your elbows on. That's the connection that's just gonna feel really supported and balanced. So it's the same thing that we just did, except now with the elbows a little bent, you rock yourself forward. You'll feel like you're gonna slide up, but your knees are already behind your elbows, so you won't have to slide up anymore. Take one foot off and just see how that balance line feels and then draw yourself down. One thing I normally say is the more you look forward, actually the more your body trusts you to lean out. If you look down, chances are you'll feel like going down more. So try the other side, rock yourself forward. See if the other foot can come off and really try to kick your butt with your foot. And then rock down once more on each side or you can release the other leg if it's feeling good. Take yourself forward, take one foot up, see if you can find that balance. If you want the other leg to come up, just hold it for a second. Really try to draw in your rib cage. And then land the toes back down. Once more on the other side. And know that, guys, this comes after a little bit of practice as well. Practice of just getting yourself to be comfortable on your hands. So don't worry if you have a little wiggle or a little wobble. When you're ready, get your feet down. Take a forward fold, allow your head to drop. Maybe a little sway, just dust off the edges of your mat. So you release your torso away from your hips. We're going to do the whole cycle again, but I'm going to give you variations if you want to take it a little deeper. So come back to downward dog, lift your hips for a moment, take a little pedal through your ankles, just to move through the arches, through the soles of your feet. Then land your knees down, just underneath your hips. Your right leg is going out, and you can hold it here, shoulders back or your left arm can go out and you can hold. If you wanna take the stretch a little deeper, start to squeeze the right foot towards your butt and reach back. Look over your shoulder. If that's where you're holding, you're not really touching the foot, just think of the shoulder moving back. If you do find you're holding the foot, really draw up through the chest and kick into the hand. The more your leg is active, the more you'll find this balance point. We're gonna hold this for two more breaths, so just keep that support line. This is one for one more breath. And then from here, release, curl the right knee in. You're stepping it outside your hand. Again, this little Shiva twist, come onto the knife edge of your foot, maybe the knife edge of your back foot. We're gonna hold it here. If you wanna take it deeper, start to push your hips towards your wrist and look over your right shoulder. Sometimes it's nice to take your right arm all the way off the floor so you feel the stretch line run up to the edge of your hip in your QL. Wherever you are, you've got two more breaths. Take a little check that this left shoulder hasn't started to soften. You're dragging it down for support. And then bringing it all the way down, hands on the floor, refining side angle. Your back heel drops, your right elbow lands on your knee. If you wanna make it deeper, put your fingers on the inside of your foot and carry your left arm all the way up overhead. We're taking three little breaths, so inhale. Like we did before, exhale to straighten the leg, really feel that space and then inhale to get a little deeper. Two more times, straighten. And everything softens down. One more time, straighten. And everything softens. Come all the way up to standing, turn your toes to parallel, really draw in your rib cage. Your hips go towards the right, your right arm goes overhead. Slide down a bit further. If you wanna make this a bit more active, hold onto your forearm just above the wrist and just think of pulling it even further. 
Again, check that this is a side stretch rather than a back bend. We're just here for one more breath in, one more breath out. And then change, your hips are going towards the left. Your left arm is going up overhead, you can hold. If it feels good to slide down the leg, do so. And if you want a little bit of a deeper reach, hold onto the forearm and just have a little pull. You've got two more breaths. Whenever your next exhale comes, use it to stand up. You're turning to face towards the left. Land your knees on the floor first, and then your chest comes all the way down. Create that ski slope in your back. And as you ripple through, push the ground away. Use your inhale to rise up. And down the dog, push yourself back. Take a little walk through your legs. We'll do it all on the other side. So land your knees down. This time your left leg comes up. Really scoop the foot up to hold it here. Move your shoulders down. If you want to take it further, take your right arm up and hold. This action from the glute in the shoulder is really important. If it feels good to go further, start to squeeze the foot in and look over your right shoulder. Hold. If you're holding onto the foot, be active through it. Kick into it and lift your chest. You've got two more breaths. Just keep that support line. This is one. For one more breath. Then release. You're stepping your foot outside your left hand. Come onto the edge of your foot and lift your back knee off the floor. You can stay here and have a little rock. If you want to take it deeper, drop the knife edge of your back foot as well. Look over your left shoulder. Maybe your hips push forward towards your wrist. If you want the left arm to go overhead, feel like you are pushing your hips back up as the arm goes overhead. And you have two breaths to stay. Even these breaths, they have a little bit of ebb and flow to it. There's a different sensation in the inhale and the exhale. So just notice that for one more breath. And then coming into side angle, your right heel is going to land. Your left elbow is going onto the shin and really push yourself down. You can carry the right arm over if you like. Or if you want the fingers to be on the ground, your stretch will be a little deeper. But take an inhale to reach long. And as you exhale, let everything straighten. Just two more times, breathing in to go low. Breathing out to extend. Your last one, breathe in. And breathe out. Then coming all the way up. Stand tall, get your toes to parallel. Hands onto your hips, shift them towards the left. Your left arm goes overhead, you can hold. If you want a little bit of a deeper pull, you will feel your abs working to keep you here. Just hold onto your forearm. Let's just hold one breath. And then change. Take your right arm up and overhead. You can hold it here or hold onto the forearm and pull. Again, just one breath in, one breath out. Standing all the way up, turn to face the side, taking it into plank. Land your knees, land your chest and your chin. And as you ripple, pull the shoulders together. Good, downward dog, lift your hips. Move through the legs a little bit more. We're gonna do a couple more standing poses before we come down to the ground. So we're gonna start with our right leg. Take your right leg towards the sky. Try not to open the hip for today, just keep the toes facing down. So you really feel the stretch through the standing leg and you feel the squeeze through the top leg. Just hold it for a moment. Then pull the knee in. We're finding a balance. This is called warrior three. Take your left leg off the floor. You can come to your fingertips and hold. If you wanna take it a little bit deeper, straighten the front leg and take your hands to prayer. If you feel this is really wobbly for your balance, just see if you can hold it here. Maybe use a brick for a bit of support. If you wanna challenge your balance, we're gonna move a little bit more. You're gonna cross the left knee behind your right to see if you can fold everything down and then inhale to straighten. Just two more times, so everything connects in. It's almost like I tuck my tailbone under, and then I balance it back out to neutral. You're doing one more time like this. Fold everything in, and let everything extend out. Then step your foot back, so you're in a deep lunge. You may wanna wiggle out your right foot a little bit more. We're taking a twist, arms go up. 
sink low into a lunge and take your left arm towards the outside of your knee. Your right arm is looking away and you're gonna hold this big twist like your knee and your hand are pushing into each other. If you wanna take it deeper, start to bend your front knee and slide your elbow outside your knee. Keep twisting over the shoulder. If you're going further, let your fingers find the floor. Again, you're twisting from the center of your body. Your back leg is still straight. You've got one more breath in. One more breath out. Okay, from here, slowly stand up. Pull the left knee into your chest. See if you can find a balance for a moment. We're gonna sit down on the floor very slowly. Take your left leg out. Reach your arms forward. Think of that curl up that we did first. We're gonna see if we can sit on the ground like that. So as you go down, this is just like a drop into pistol. If you feel you need to put your hands down at any point, do so. We're gonna see if we can land without falling like that. So I'm gonna do it again. And I want you to think of the tuck of your tailbone that's going to help you. As you reach it down, really reach forward and then you will find a bit more support. From here, take your left hand back, turn the fingertips out, come onto the knife edge of your left foot. Take the right arm up and lift a little. It's like a side plank. If you wanna go further, come onto the toes of your right foot and lift a little higher. Or maybe you start to lift all the way up and come towards, it's called wild thing in yoga. It's pretty much side plank, but with one foot behind and you drive up. You've got two more breaths. You can look down, just check that the shoulder hasn't relaxed, it's pulling into its socket. If you look up, you will find you can go further. But whenever your next exhale comes, sit all the way on the floor. We're gonna step back to plank. So take your left hand, bring it forward. You're gonna scoop in from your belly a lot, so the left knee tucks into your chest. And then just step back. Find yourself in downward dog. Move through the legs a little. Let the head shake out. And we'll do the other side. You're starting with your left leg, carry it up. Really squeeze the foot away. If you want to flex the foot, that's fine. But just check that you haven't opened the hips. Your toe and your knee faces down. Hold it for a breath. And then find warrior three, you're stepping your foot forward. Find your balance. Sometimes it's just nice to find your balance, your fingers on the floor and the foot just hovering. If you want a bit more, kick the foot away. Start to straighten this leg. And whatever you do with the back foot, just have some intention with it. If you feel you want more, come on to, well, just take your hands off the floor. Let's do three little folds. So your knee crosses behind the left and then inhale up. Two more times, let everything cross. And everything goes up. So you're just kind of getting your body to find the way between all these shakes and all these wobbles and understand where the center is. Find a little hold, then step all the way back. You may want to wiggle your foot a little bit wider so you find a really low lunge. Take your arms overhead. And as you twist, take the hand outside your knee and look over your left shoulder. I'm imagining I could push my chest through my arms. If you want more, start to slide your hand a little further or so far down that the elbow comes outside your knee. If you find your fingertips reach the floor, just use it to give you a little bit more twist. You should feel a stretch line through the outside of your hip. I'm still thinking of a long spine rather than a rounded one. For one more breath. And then when you're ready to stand, slowly come up. You're gonna pull your knee in towards your chest, really get it tight. Hold it for a second and we're gonna lower slowly. So take your arms out. As you lower, think of pulling the core in and just find your way to sit on the ground. When you do sit down, come onto the knife edge of your foot. Put your right hand behind you, fingers face away. Start to push off this right shoulder so you find a little lift. You can hold it here just to work on your shoulder strength or start to push up a little higher so the heel comes up on your left leg and maybe the left arm goes overhead. If you wanna take this into a little bit of a back bend, start to push your hips even higher and look over the side. So there's more rotation through the chest. You've got two more breaths. 
If you feel like it gives you any pain in your shoulder, just reset by putting your hips down, checking the shoulder, it's in a socket, and then coming up again. One more breath. Come all the way down. You're gonna come step all the way back, so put your right hand just close to your foot. Squeeze the right knee in towards your body and then step it back. From here, you're finding yourself into plank. One more descent, land your knees, land your chest, land your chin. Roll up your spine. As you inhale, look high. And as you exhale, just land all the way down on your front. We're gonna take little steps over. It's a similar sensation to what we started with, but now you're starting from your front. So take your right arm out, pull the shoulder away, and step your left foot up and over. You can stay here. I actually keep my chest off the floor because I feel more stretched, but if you like to relax your head, you can do that as well. You can take the leg quite high behind you, or just a little bit of a drop, but hold it for a moment, and then change. Go the other way. Take your left arm out, pull it away from its socket. You can just step the foot over and hold. If you wanna go deeper, step the foot a little higher. Try to lift your chest up more. I'll do a couple more. It doesn't have to be a long hold. Just kind of using it to feel a bit of stretch in your chest. Maybe a spiral of your low back as well. All the way up and over. Last one each side. Hold it here. If it feels good, pull the shoulders down. Maybe let your chest sink. You can slide the foot up a little higher and hold on with the right hand if you like. Maybe let your head go for a breath in and a breath out. Other side, bring yourself up. Slide your left arm out. Step your right foot over. You can hold. If you want to go deeper, slide the foot a little higher so you can hold on with the opposite hand. You can keep your chest off the floor or let it drop. We want to feel a little bit of a stretch through the front of our hip and a stretch through the shoulder as well. One more breath in. One more breath out. And then bring yourself all the way up. We're going to swing ourselves around so our feet face forward. We're going to kind of finish the same way we started. Take your hands into prayer. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, tuck your tailbone under. Start to roll through your spine all the way to the ground. Then one more time, roll yourself up. Inhale to come high. Exhale to bring yourself down. Let's take a little stretch of our glutes lying on the ground. So cross the right ankle over the left knee. Hold onto the shin, or if that's not available, you can also hold onto the hamstring. Check that your hips aren't rolling off the floor. You're going to keep it there and just pull up and then in. So I'm not just pulling down. I'm thinking up and then in. So eventually my left knee starts to come closer to my left shoulder. This is a really nice time to close your eyes again and let your breath start to become even slower. When you close your eyes, you allow yourself to be removed from one of your senses so the other senses can be heightened. You start to hear a little clearer. The sensations your body is giving you start to be a little bit stronger. You can just pay more attention to them because you've taken away your sense of sight. When you're ready, just switch sides. The same thing, your left ankle goes over your right knee. Hold on behind the hamstring or if it's available around the shin. Check that your hips aren't rolling off the floor. You want to keep them imprinted down. And if you want, you can hold it here and just close your eyes. If you want a little more, think of pulling the knee up and then in. And we're going to stay for just a few more breaths. If the stretch is quite intense in one part of your body, I encourage you to think about your breath spreading around that point. So every single inhale is directed towards that sensation point. And every single exhale just lets the tension go from that place. Whenever you finish your last exhale, allow your feet to just come down. Let your knees have a little drop from side to side, so you just let everything release. And we're gonna take just two minutes of stillness on the floor. You can choose to be still with your feet in and your knees falling out to the sides. Or if you want, you can take your legs out a little wider, have a little wiggle of your feet. 
until they fall off to the edges. It's a really good sign that your body's relaxed when your feet can fall off to the sides. So see if you can find that sensation. And your hands can be on your torso or outstretched, anywhere that feels good. As long as you're not holding on to a shape, now it's the absence of shape. It's just letting your body rest on the floor. And wherever you've chosen to sit or to lie, take a deep breath in for me. And imagine your exhale just feeds out even slower. Every single exhale is this sensation of dropping just a little further. The ability to relax is something that sometimes is harder for us than it was for our ancestors. We live in a world where everything moves fast and rushes around, and we feel constantly that we have to keep up. So that even when we're supposed to relax, like when we need to sleep or recover, it's like we've forgotten how to do so. It's like our brain just can't make the switch. And a movement practice like this can just help you make that transition a little bit smoother so you can recalibrate. You can support your nervous system from a stress response to a recovery response to a more healing response. Notice now that you've been here for a few breaths, maybe you can relax even more. Maybe there's a little bit more tension to be given away. Notice how your breath is just supporting your ability to relax. You're not trying to mold it or change it in any way. You're just letting it flow in and out as organically it wasn't intended to. Take just one more breath in through your nose and make your exhale really nice and soft. And then start to make little movements with your wrists and your feet. So you start introducing movement, but keep your eyes closed so it's still about feeling. If you want, you can stretch your arms overhead or out to the sides. You can stretch your feet really long and then roll over onto whatever side of the body feels good and bring yourself up to sit tall. Once you're sitting up tall, take your hands into prayer. To create a little bit of awareness again, I want you to rub your hands together. You'll start to notice that heat forms. This heat is directly connected to your bloodline. It's directly connected to your pulse. It's directly connected to your ability to breathe. So keep that going. And when you feel your hands get really warm, let your hands come over your eyes. Feel all that magic just settle into your headspace. Take a big breath with your hands still over your eyes. And as you exhale, Breathe out through your mouth, your hands find prayer. Take a little bow to yourself. Namaste, guys. Thank you for moving with me. I'll see you on the mat soon.